uncomfortably. Hmm. Some of you might think that's a cruel joke. I mean, how can climbing ever be comfortable? Well, there's actually no reason to put yourself through any pain or discomfort that is unnecessary when cycling, especially on a long climb when, let's face it, most of us are going to be in a fair bit of discomfort anyway, just from pedaling uphill for ages. So this video is about how to be as comfortable as possible on a bike uphill so that you can save that suffering for your cardiovascular system and the pain in your legs. And even that pain of exertion, if you think about it, we want to try to minimise for a given power. We want maximum gain for our pain. I mean, perhaps if you're out for a long day's riding and you're taking the climbs nice and steady, you could even enjoy them. A much neglected aim, in my opinion. A comfortable cyclist is a happy cyclist. If your bike doesn't fit you, it will be very hard to get comfortable, whether that's uphill, downhill, or on the flat. I mean, yes, the human body is very adaptable and you can get used to most things, but if your saddle is in the wrong position relative to your bottom bracket and your handlebars, it will be very hard to get comfortable and you will develop niggles. And those niggles will be magnified over a long climb because you have to exert power for a long time. You don't get a break on a long climb unless you get off to rest, which nobody really wants to do. There's just no chance to freewheel on a long climb. So if during training you develop aches or pains in your knees, shoulders, neck, back, well, I mean actually anywhere that's not your working muscles, you should consider changing your position, perhaps with the help of a professional bike fitter who will be able to look at your physiology and flexibility because everybody is different and shoes and cleat position as well as your bike setup. To make the quest for the perfect bike fit even more difficult, a lot of people actually find that their position changes on a long climb because they slide backwards on the saddle due to gravity. Now this might mean that the saddle that you thought was your bum's best friend turns out to be a diabolical enemy and you really don't want to be finding that out halfway up a long climb in your target event or on a week cycling holiday. So I would advise that if you don't regularly ride on long climbs, you should practice that different position. Try deliberately sliding back in the saddle on shorter climbs, or put a big block under your front wheel during indoor trainer sessions. If you're lucky enough to own a Wahoo climb, that is perfect. And if your regular saddle gives you problems like this, try changing the saddle angle ever so slightly. If that doesn't work, experiment with different saddles. There's no single right saddle that works for everyone. It's a totally personal choice. Now, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Choose the right gears. I have never heard anyone complain that they had too many gears for a climb. However, so many people find that their ride is ruined by running out of gears and having to grind out a massive gear that hurts their back, hurts their legs, and basically leaves them knackered. So if in doubt, go for a smaller gear than you used to and practice spinning. Now that we've dealt with the preparation, let's think about what you can do on the bike to make you feel more comfortable. Now, obviously, your cadence is limited by the gears you have, but within those limits, you can choose what gear to ride. Now, there is no correct cadence. Obviously, it's related to physiology, leg length, crank length, personal preference, but do think about what cadence you use. If, for example, you choose to grind out a really big gear for ages, that will cause a lot of muscular fatigue. And if, on the other hand, you choose to spin at a crazy high cadence and it's not your usual style, well, it's going to put a lot of a load on your cardiovascular system. Neither extreme is very helpful. Pace. It might sound obvious, but don't overcook it at the start of a long climb if you want to stay comfortable. Especially in a sportive or a race, it is easy to get carried away initially by the excitement and the adrenaline and the people around you. Be careful though, because you might end up paying for that later. If, for example, you forget to eat and drink for too long or you use up all of your glycogen. Now, if you find that you get a sore back riding out of the saddle, it might be worth trying this trick, which is to just stand up for short periods. It uses different musculature and it allows you to stretch your back out. Now, not everyone likes riding out of the saddle, but for me, it was the best way to stretch out my back when I was riding. 
And if you don't often ride out the saddle, well, it's worth practicing. Overheating is not just uncomfortable, it's dangerous. If your body temperature gets too high, your physical ability will decrease, and at the extreme end, you could end up with hypothermia. Now, long climbs in the summer, especially if you're racing, are the classic opportunity for you to overheat. It's uphill, so you're not moving very fast, there isn't much wind to cool you down, and your exertion is high, so your body temperature is rising all on its own. So give your body as much help as you can staying cool. If it's gonna be hot and you get the choice, well, set off early. Wear appropriate clothing, unzip, although please do stay decent. If you're still getting too hot, try just tipping water down your back, in your helmet, on your forearms. Just don't use energy drink, because that's really gross and wasps will follow you around all day. Staying hydrated is important for both health and comfort because you will feel terrible if you get dehydrated and it increases your risk of overheating. So try to drink little sips and often, obviously how much you need to drink depends on how hot it is and how hard you're working. Don't wait until you're thirsty to drink because that's usually too late. And if you glug down a whole load in one go, you will feel bloated and uncomfortable and it could upset your stomach. Trust me, I've tried it and it's not very nice. If you're going to use isotonic drinks or energy drinks, which can be a good idea for long events in the heat, make sure you practice them in training because stomach cramps due to experimenting with a new energy drink will definitely not help you to feel comfortable. Now, discomfort goes to a whole new level if you blow up and get the shakes on a climb, as you'll know if that's ever happened to you. So you need to stay fueled. On the other hand, you don't want to eat so much that you're really full and bloated and you can't breathe properly. That's also really uncomfortable. Clearly there's a balance. You want to eat small amounts of fast digesting carbohydrate, little and often. And just like drinks, you should practice in training with what you're gonna use on a long climb because you don't want any unexpected indigestion. I think happiness is much underrated in cycling and being happy will make you feel more comfortable in a climb. So however it works for you, maybe check out the view, talk to your friends, think of all the cookies you're burning off, sing to yourself. You might be going uphill for quite a long time, so you might as well be happy while you're doing it. Now, training seems so obvious that it's almost not worth mentioning, but obviously, if you've trained appropriately, you will feel more comfortable on long climbs. For a start, you'll know how your body is gonna respond to that exertion, and secondly, you'll have had a chance to practice some of these tactics. Now, if you don't live near any long climbs, don't panic. GCN has a video telling you how to train on the flat for climbs. I hope this video helps you to enjoy your climbs this summer. Give us a thumbs up if so, and if you wanna check out how to ride steep climbs, click down here.